how can I save money? What is it that I can do to save money on my rental property? And like the, all these landlords trying to cost down, right? mm-hmm. save money here, save money there, you know, yeah. buck here, buck there. Yeah, it does add up. But saving is not the investor way. No, but you know, that's a, that might be more of a personality way, especially when the tenants, you know, maybe paying under market rent, even though you might be cash flowed. We see, I see a lot of landlords that are still cash flowed with under market rent, paid off property, they've had it for so long, they're still making money and they're still finding ways to save money. And we see a lot of landlords that are in trouble because they're trying to save a dollar. I think there's a difference between optimizing your property and cutting costs or optimizing costs versus saving to the point where it's like, you're trying to get the meat off the bone, but you're only dealing with bone now, right? Yeah, and you are trying to provide a service to the tenant. So it's like, if you go into that restaurant and they're cutting down on all the costs, you're going to be able to tell, hey, why am I eating with a plastic fork tonight? Where's yeah. the good cutlery? Or why now it's as a buffet and you end up like having to walk up and serve yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Fancy restaurant yeah. on James Street and now the yeah. Mandarin. Service with a smile means you get up and smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I tell all, all landlords, and I'm, I'm a cheap person, I'm frugal. The one place you don't want to be cheap and frugal is when it comes to the LTB. You have to be able to fill out N4s over and over and over again and do hundreds of them before you're confident enough that you don't get it wrong. Yeah, so I think I think what we should cover in this in this conversation is really like all the areas that landlords will typically go about saving money, how they'll go about it, yeah. how it can also go wrong sometimes because I think I think if we nip this point in the butt like early on we can kind of move on with the conversation which is that saving is only going to get you so far. Saving is, in fact, in the long term, a losing battle because you can only save so much. And we hear it all the time for uh, all kinds of gurus talking about investing and all kinds of people talking about making money is that your potential to make more and more money is, relatively speaking, limitless, whereas your ability to save has a bottom line. You can only save so much. We understand that people will come across hard times. And when you come across hard times, you have to adjust and saving ends up being very sensible or cutting costs ends up Mm. being very sensible in certain situations. So let's let's talk about it because you know you started off with the landlord and tenant board, and I feel that uh, people underestimate the the importance of hiring out somebody who knows what they're doing, and we hear yeah. this all the time because of people who come to us with crazy situations. Yeah, as simple as the N four, which it seems very simple. There's only a couple boxes to fill out. It's not that simple, and it's not the form that's that's the hard part. That screwing up and making a mistake costs you eight months of waiting time. That's the form. Yeah, <laughs> and if you ever been to the LTB, if you ever been to the LTB. You will see it. If you're waiting on the docket for two o'clock, yeah. you'll see a couple in the morning that get kicked out. And that happens all the time. The biggest mistake in case anybody is about to fill out an N4 is that people will complete it, but they won't add those five days that are required when you're mailing it yeah. on top of the 14 day uh, deadline that you have to put in the in the first box. Right. Yeah. So they mess that up. Listen, count five days, then count five more and just add them on. I mean, you like you get them five more days. It's not like. We're, when we're talking about the LTV, we're talking about months process, right? Yeah. Don't don't worry about a few days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give them a few extra days. It's okay. At least you're not worried about your, your case getting kicked. You can tell the adjudicator, you know, I was generous with time. I gave them an extra five days. Yeah, yeah. Right. What's the worst that can happen when it comes to that? Yeah, but how much does a paralegal charge to fill up those forms? Yeah, you should be paying around like 100 to 200 bucks to fill yeah. out N4. Okay, so every time your tenant is late, you're going to hire a paralegal to fill up N- a form? Not every time the tenant is late when you are prepared to go to the LTB. Yeah. Which you should never be prepared to go to the LTB. It should be a plan F. Always plan F. Never yeah. plan A. Never plan B. Plan F oh. for relationships failed. <laughs> you should plan F for a lot of reasons. So when it comes down to that, and then you're at the point where, for whatever reason, the tenant's just off the walls and you have to go through the LTB and that's the only way that you're going to get the eviction and him out of your property. When you're at that point, you need someone professional to fill that form for you. You need someone to take some accountability in case something does go wrong. And yeah, and then you really have to think about the gravity of the situation and is something that you're going to try to save money on really worth it, right? And if, if things go astray. Yeah. Right? So If you try to save money on cutting your own grass, the landscaper messes up and puts an S in the, in the lawn instead of straight lines. You know, you're not losing thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. And, and that's where sometimes people are also going to measure a certain type of work and say, oh, how hard is it? Oh, a lot of people, sometimes I find they look at a, they look at some work and they either don't understand how hard it is or they look at some of these blue collar workers and think, wow, these guys are these guys are making more than me. I hear a lot of people say that, that why would I pay this guy, you know, six hundred dollars for one day of work? Yeah. Right. And it's like, OK, well, I mean, we always use the toilet. How, yeah. how expensive it is to change your toilet. Yeah, yeah that, that's another one. Then you see these landlords going in there, no experience with plumbing at all, yeah. going there and trying to change their own toilet. And now there's a huge leak. Through the ceiling. Didn't put you're the gasket call, on. Yeah, yeah you're getting called 2 a.m. Yeah. So there, there is reasons why people try to cheap out, and there's the right ways to cheap out and the wrong ways to cheap out. Okay, so let, let's focus the conversation. Let's talk about, first of all, like for better or for worse, all the wrong ways that people cheap out. Like what is it that sometimes we see landlords doing in order to save? And sometimes it, sometimes it, sa- it does save them money. 
but it's just not good, viable, long-term solutions. The advice that I would say on that is just figure out your problem-solving skills regardless of what it is. Yeah. Okay, if it's a plumbing issue, you should be able to diagnose over the phone where the leak's coming from. It should be that simple. Yeah. And if you can do that and then text your plumber, even texting your plumber saying, hey, I want you to quote this job. Okay, I'll be here near my phone. My phone's on loud. Can you just go in there? Let me know what a service call is and go quote the job. This is the best way. If you don't have a plumber that you know by name, this is how you handle the plumber. You told him where the leak's coming from. He's not searching around spending hours because there are some plumbers that will go in there and they'll you know, start at the top and work their way down. And then all of a sudden it's in the basement corner somewhere and you have a three hour bill. So if you could just figure out as a landlord, knowing where these problems come from, we talked before about the most common maintenance problems. It's usually like pests, plumbing and appliances. So as long as you have those three down paths, you should be okay to save some money. Yeah. Ultimately here you're saving on diagnostic, right? Where sometimes you, it, it's always a shame when you send one person and then you find out the issue is well, different. So try to get good at diagnosing issues yourself. What you're trying to do is you're trying to save on people's time because in reality, that's what they're billing you for. Yeah. The plumber's billing you for the time. The appliance repairman's billing you for time. The pest control guy's billing you for time. Sure, there might be some supplies onto that, but you know most of the cost is labor costs. Yeah. So if you can just trim that down a little bit, just by telling them where to look, hey, it's in the attic in this corner, Yeah. instead of just saying, hey, it's in the third floor. Right now you're talking about maintenance, right? But as it pertains to maintenance, not everybody is going to be either as like technical or just be as a... Uh, savvy with their property as let's say some other people were i mean i think the implication is that if you're even remotely a diy person and you're even considering going there and doing something yourself it means maybe you have a bit of an understanding but you know if you don't ultimately you you want to at least go watch a few youtube videos educate yourself generally uh and try to have an understanding to at least guide whoever it is that you're sending and the longer you hold on to the property the more familiar you will become but i think what we see people do is like i think the most common thing we see some landlords do is they'll go take care of things like lawn and snow yeah right Lawn and snow removal. Let's let's talk about that. How much is it for lawn grass cutting? Thirty bucks. Thirty bucks, right? Yeah. Thirty bucks. You're saving <laughs> effectively if you go do it. You're saving thirty bucks, and you gotta wonder about the gas prices, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, thirty bucks there. And your Saturday ahead. morning. Yeah, exactly. And your time, right? So thirty more, thirty bucks for that. What about snow removal? Snow removal is a lot more expensive. Yeah, snow removal is the type of thing that if you work a day job, like you shouldn't be touching. Yeah. Because you do need to be out there asap. But yeah, cost of snow removal 30, 50 bucks. And I see some landlords they go, you know, like. Like clockwork. Every time the snow drops, they go there. Some guys grab their kids, go there with the snow shovels, and you know, start shoveling the snow. It's, for some guys, it's a family activity. Yeah, and I see a lot of landlords that like, and I see this with um, coins a lot, the laundry coin machines. Oh yeah, where the landlords like to bring their kids and you know do the snow and shows them, hey, you know, this is going to be your building one day. This is going to be your house yeah. one day, and you grow up like that. It's kind of cool. I mean, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, there might be better ways to to do it. Maybe take out the trash on trash day. Yeah. Actually, that's another one. I see landlords go to the rental properties and take out and take out the garbage. And this this is all. It, it, this will all. If you put it all together, it reflects on pride of ownership. Frankly, yeah. going there, cleaning your property, taking out the garbage, making everything is like uh, yeah. in line the way it's supposed to be. And also, when the tenants see that you are present, it reflects well. One hundred percent. So it's not like it's all not a bad thing. I think where it starts to become a little bit detrimental is when it starts to take away from things that you ought to or would want to otherwise be doing. Yeah. Like uh, if you want to be spending time with your kids, if you want to be spending time with your family, if uh, you want to in any way be um, expanding your real estate portfolio and you want to be looking for other deals. It's like these are all decisions that you're making to the, a conscious choice to go and do something rather than something else. Yeah, you're saving money, but you also gave yourself a part time job. Yeah. So if you were to go out and get a part time job, you would be just making that money. Yeah. So really, you're just giving up your time for free. And if that's OK with you and you want to do it because of the sense of home ownership then that's fine. Where we see the, most of the mistakes that come that come in with trying to save money is actually doing the maintenance yourself. And YouTube, because YouTube's great. You ever YouTube something that you have no clue what you're doing? You could yeah. YouTube like change a car's engine and then all of a sudden you're like, I could do that. <laughs> and they make it sound so easy. Yeah. And we have so many landlords that think that they can do it and then all of a sudden they have these problems. And it all roots back to me because the, big, the biggest problems that we have are tenant issues, right? The tenants get frustrated when they're, you know, the fridge breaks and you YouTube something, you think you can fix it with a $20 part and a roll of duct tape, and, you know, the tenants are pissed. I've seen a lot of tenants complain about that, especially the handy tenants, you know, the guys who are, like, uh, they're in the trades, right? And so they know how to fix a variety of things, but they know that that's not their responsibility as a landlord. And so the landlord comes in, he doesn't and then they know charge the work. what it is that they're doing, and the, then the tenant's just like, man... <laughs> This guy should just pay me to go do it, yeah. right? If you're a software engineer, go engineer software. Let me fix this. Just pay me to do it from what, from whatever you make, putting in overtime somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So you end up building tensions if you're doing something that you're not qualified for. But ultimately, though, 
I, landlords still do these type of things all the time. It's because they're attracted to the idea of being able to cut costs, save money. Yeah. Right. So you know they'll they'll try to do these things. Sometimes it's successful. So you know we see it. Like um, so we said lawn cutting, snow removal. What else is that you see them save money on? Obviously garbage removal. What else do they go do? They'll change the toilet every now and then. Maybe deliver appliances. My favorite is when they go buying shop Kijiji. Used, yeah. Buying used appliances. Kijiji is a big shopping one. appliances. That yes. one is always uh, that that one's something. I feel that people who say it's worth it are people who enjoy the hunt of finding a good deal. Then, and then it breaks down. But the person on the other end is not even worth it for them to list it for hundred bucks if they're going to sell both. You of them see it like all the time on Facebook where yeah, they're listing for. What, what is it? I hear guys talk about the scrap metal and this stuff. It's like what forty bucks an appliance for scrap. Yeah. Right. And you gotta sell them both for a hundred bucks. You could have given them to scrappers. They yeah, pay you. Yeah. No, but there's so many cheap appliances. The the fridges and you know they're just one thing away from breaking. Especially when you move them from you know they've been in a place for ten years. And then you're picking it up and moving it to somewhere else. But these guys will look at it. The, alternatively, the cost of it is like, what, $800 with taxes for one new one, $1,600 for two appliances that are in the refurb kind of area. Uh, if you're buying them brand new, you're looking at pushing $2,000 for like a fridge and a stove. You can find them on Facebook Marketplace Kajiji for like, what, three, four, five hundred bucks for a, like a pair? Yeah. Right. And if you go $500, $600, you can buy some pretty nice appliances from a nice home. And you go to the home, you look at it, and you can find a pretty good deal. No, there is, for DIY people, there is a lot of benefit to it. It's just, I think we need, you and I need to exit the, the thought process of all the limiting aspects. Because if we were DIY people that, like, I think we actually were, have been DIY yeah. people, we've just learned a few things. Yeah. But let's just say from the perspective of DIY uh, kind of thing, you know, handle things yourself, internalize and save, you know, what are the effective things, right? So if you can find two appliances on Marketplace for like 500 bucks versus $2,000, that's 75% saving. Yeah, yeah, it's a big savings. There's a lot of risks that, that come involved with getting appliances. I always get worried that the appliance will break down the first day. And the second thing, a, a bug. I, I don't trust getting a any appliances from someone else's house yeah i say and you see all the posts say bug free home on the post why did you need to mention that yeah <laughs> yeah bug free home i thought it was implied yeah, yeah. i get this uh, like when you uh, I see people list furniture all the time and i get the smoke free stuff but like whatever if you're that type of landlord that's trying to save you know 400 bucks on a wash and dryer set there's other ways to save the money there is way other ways well let's talk about the other ways then. let's talk about talking to the tenant on why the wash and dryer breaks oh yeah because they usually just don't break so there is proactive uh, maintenance or proactive things that you can do to prevent things from uh, breaking down. Honestly, uh, tenant education on the property yeah. is highly underrated, right? Yeah. Especially for student rentals and international students. I think we take for granted in North America uh, the fact that we use dryers. Where in other con other countries, a lot of other countries, they don't use dryers. They have washing machines, but they don't use dryers. Yeah. Right? It depends on where they're coming from. They know that clothesline. Yeah, yeah, they use a clothesline or something like that. Yeah. And then people don't know, for example, to clean out the lint trap. Yeah. Right. And it might not even be international students. Sometimes just the kids who had their parents doing their laundry yes. all this time don't know to clean out the lint traps. So the freaking dryer breaks down or like burns up, up or something. Right. Yeah. They, they, and it has problems. Right. And you just or people who you don't, don't know. Empty your pockets. Empty your pockets is a big one. Oh, empty. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, so the proactive education just tells you how to use it or make sure to actually talk to them because nobody's going to read whatever it is that you post there. But making sure also that they clean out the the rim of the washing machine or empty the little thing that catches uh, all the gunk, right? Yeah. Either you send somebody over there to do it, go do it yourself, or tell the tenant to do it so that yeah. the, the thing doesn't break down. Yeah, That's a great way to save money. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I would save the money. I had a tenant one time where the washer broke and I went there and I put the washer on and it was fine. I go, okay, let's do a load of laundry and see why it doesn't work then. Because obviously it works for me. And they put a load of laundry in. They put the whole laundry basket in. The whole basket. You can barely close the door. Not the basket itself. No, not the basket okay. itself. All the clothes <laughs> yeah. in in the basket. Couldn't close the door. There's so many clothes in there. Yeah, no wonder why your clothes aren't getting washed good. Right? It's not rocket science. Yeah. By the way, any anybody looking for these types of appliances, the best rental property washing machines are the top loaders yeah just just in case they like they're yeah. so you resilient have, you need the room yeah you don't have the room make the room yeah ideally if you can yes. right like so but ultimately those things are highly resilient to yes. all kinds of abuse very easy to repair the parts are abundant yeah. and i say easy to repair a technician if they come in it's easy to access very good on maintenance right very yeah. forgivable parts are abundant right so yeah. just something to consider those front load ones is like an array of problems ordering parts and you're often going to find that it that the part is more expensive than trying to find a yeah, refurbished it's one buying, it's buying a ford car versus a bmw import parts yeah yeah crazy that's just how it works uh another preventative one to save money fridges so underneath the back of the fridge uh that needs to be cleaned out once in a while yeah. nobody homeowners everybody no, nobody just take cleans a vacuum. that stuff up. yeah but people just take a vacuum. because you have the fridge tucked away very nicely yeah. almost like a, into an, its own alcove you're not yes. going to roll the fridge out and clean out the back yeah it gets very dusty plus in a year i guarantee you drop something behind your fridge yeah 
So you'll be 100%. amazed with what you find. So no, this is the kind of thing where I feel like, you know, once a year, once a year, you should go to your rental property and just do certain preventative things that are going to yeah. save you money by just being conscious and aware of certain problems that can happen. So the fridge going behind it, vacuuming it out that way you don't have to shop yeah. for it or whatever. Yeah. Have a good shop vac as a tool for a landlord. Even take your, your vent covers off where yeah. your ducts are. Just vacuum them out. Do it to your dryer. Yeah. Right. Un- unplug the dryer. You can do it from the outside even. Just vacuum it out. I don't want to make too many suggestions that require spending more money in order to save money because, you know, the whole point is there's a resistance towards spending the money and that's what's encouraging the conversation to begin with. But landlords who have properties with trees that have drain problems, right? And yeah. like sometimes the roots from the trees get into the plumbing, yeah. uh, get into the drain pipes. Yeah. If you have a property like this and you constantly have issues like that happening and you can't e- either cut down the tree or whatever, if you snake the drain once a year with a cutter, yeah. you won't have any issues. Yeah. Once a year, send somebody in, Roto or whoever, snake the drain, and you're, you're, you won't have a problem. Yeah. People look to warranty programs all the time for how to save money. <laughs> what do you think about warranty programs? Let's warranty. talk about the... Let's talk about what, which one was it? I think Reliance Home Comfort had this like had, had so crazy stupid. One. You so know, stupid. You, some of them are sound that sounded too good to be true. Like the plumbing one where they will fix any plumbing problem that you have. And it was for like a hundred bucks a year subscription or something like that yeah there's no way yeah yeah there's no way like, i was looking at i'm just like this is a there's scam. no way there's fine print where I, is it i do have some clients that do have these reliance warranties and they have like a main water line warranty every time there's an issue it takes days for them to come out oh yeah and we have a lot of no heat calls that happen especially in the past couple of weeks where it's been so cold and if you have reliance and you have no heat I'll tell you a story one of my family members had, has Reliance, their furnace went down, they needed a new furnace, it was covered, okay, but it took a week and a half to get the furnace replaced. The Reliance guy left in the dead of night, super cold, they will be back in a week and a half. What do you do? Your pipes are going to freeze. We're going to live for a week and a half. Yeah. There's not a solution. If I can call the next HVAC supplier down the street, okay, in the industrial sector, sector here in Hamilton, and I go, hey, this is the BTU furnace, this is the make, a keep right furnace, do you have it in stock? Yeah, we do. There's a problem there. And the problem is that Reliance is only buying their furnaces from, you know, a certain company, mm. right? That they're getting a super cheap and they don't care if you have to wait a week and a half. You sign an agreement that doesn't matter. It's, it's you know, for 20 years. Yeah. That's forever. Yeah. Even if you sell the house, there's an agreement. Yeah, you have to either buy it out or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So what do they care if it's a week and a half to fix your furnace in the yeah. dead of winter? So it's interesting that that happened because I feel that the warranty services are going to perform differently than their sales services. Like, for example, at one of my properties, um, and this was like early on in my real estate investing, I the the boiler went out in the middle of winter, right? Yeah. Like bad situation, couldn't fix it, didn't know what to do. I called yeah. Reliance and for sales, as long as I signed the contract, they will be there to install a brand new one the next day. Yeah. Right. Which I was like, I was very impressed by that. Yeah. And I was thinking that that's great. But yeah, you're right. When it comes to the warranties and then once they already have your money, it feels like they kind of drag their knuckles a little bit. Yeah. They will the leverage. Exactly. So you're, you're kind of stuck with them. Their contract probably protects them. Uh, and if the pipes burst or anything like that, it's an insurance issue. But yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it becomes it becomes troublesome in terms of like how you're going to leverage these things. And I, I have heard of a lot of landlords, even for rental properties, using these um, warranty companies. And it's usually an issue of time. Okay. Right. Plumbing repairs, like it just takes them days to get out there. Yeah. And, like you can't leave these things going for too long. And how like how the how the sales works is that if you're buying that as a landlord or even a homeowner. You are buying peace of mind. Just like when you buy a card, you buy the extended warranty. You are buying peace of mind. You don't need peace of mind when you have somebody that knows what they're doing. Okay, I'm not going to be more expensive than any Reliance place or any, you know, crazy plumber when this stuff happens. Your warranty, warranties only exist because they make money. Sure, once in a while they have your back, okay, but it will take forever when it comes down to this type of stuff. And what do you do when you get that fridge warranty? 250 bucks, 300 bucks on a thousand dollar fridge. Yeah. That's 30% of the fridge. And then the fridge breaks on your tenant's property. And they say it's a week for a new fridge. Okay. What are you so, going to do? Yeah. There's certain things that fall into a more urgent category where I feel like the warranties are a little more challenging. Like plumbing stuff tends to be urgent. Uh, a fridge tends to be urgent. Right. But tell me let's something say that a they washing sell. machine a, a warranty. I think that's okay. Washing machine warranty. If it takes them a week to get out there, they go to the laundromat for a week. Not a big deal. Right? Okay. That one's not as much of a big deal. Uh, what else is like a good warranty? The roof repair one. I feel people misunderstand the warranty for roofs that they give, uh, where it doesn't always mean that they're going to come in and like just do all kinds of patches. You know, yeah. if something happens. They might go up there, assess it, and if it was like something else that happened, and they'll like, never right, admit it. Like, and no. you're not going to climb the ladder beside them and be like, "No, no, you're wrong." Yeah. Warranty services are are very tricky, and yeah. it's and people don't realize how not so great they are for real estate investors yeah. until they've had to use them in in hard circumstances yeah the only warranty that you were able to point out was the washer warranty that makes sense because you can wait 
But if you look at the prices that you're paying for that warranty versus how much a new one is at Home Depot, it's not a crazy difference. Yeah. And there's so much headache, again, that goes back to the tenant and you scheduling, you having to tell your tenant, hey, you have to go to the laundromat for a week until I get the part. Hopefully, you know, there's no supply chain issues. Landlords save money on property management and leasing services. Yeah. Right. So sometimes pretty much everything we just talked about had to do with property management. So they're there in the in the heat of things and dealing with the day to day. Right. Yeah. That's how they save money. Next way they save money is on leasing. Tenant's going to leave. They go on to go and find a new tenant. Now, this is the part of the work where I feel like there's landlords who like to be present for the day to day stuff of their property, but they don't want to be using advertising platforms, especially the old school landlords. They don't want to have to get on Marketplace. They don't want to yeah. have to get on Realtor. They don't want to have to get on any of these things to find somebody. So they're more likely to consume leasing services than they are to consume property management services. So let's talk about the difference between uh, a leasing agent yeah. finding a tenant versus an individual landlord doing themselves. Yeah, the difference is that we do this on a daily basis. Yeah. Right, we have a leasing team. We see so many applications. We see so many showings that happen that you only see it once or twice. You know, every so many years, the experience of picking out a tenant and organizing the showings, we're just on a whole other level. Plus, messaging back and forth. If you work a day job, how are you getting back to Facebook? There's no way you're messaging all day long, yeah. and there's so much communication that needs to be put down when you're posting on Facebook and Kijiji. Because ideally, what you want is you want great photos, great description, that you're getting so many leads. I knew a professional tenant from back in the day and mm -hmm. they, we, we stayed in touch. Yeah. Uh, we just chat every now and then. I'm kind of curious as to like what he's doing. And the guy straight up, he goes around just like milking the system. Like he'll, he'll pay rent for a period of time, but then he'll go through long periods of yeah. time where he just won't pay rent. This is something he does. And like, whatever, like, what do you do about this? Report him, yeah. right? Like it, it, the system has, the system has had him through the landlord tenant board so many times. It's not like they don't know him, but yeah. he just continues to go around and do this. Right. And, and, and that's a whole other conversation, but he does go and look for, he only applies to places where the landlord is the one who's self-managing and yeah. doing the leasing themselves because they don't have the same security checks that professionals do. But that aside, the reason why landlords will sometimes do that is because they don't want to pay one month's rent towards the cost of paying a tenant, right? If you're, if you have a tenant there for $3,000, a month for a unit that's three thousand dollars that you're paying for somebody to place that tenant and that can that that is a lot of money to a lot of yep. people so if you think about it especially when you know you have a nice place and you see some of these guys they go they advertise it one day next day they get a strong applicant they find a tenant what two days of work they made three thousand dollars and some guys don't feel good about that yeah so that's why they go and they do it themselves again i feel like it's the same thing like like having to serve your own forms going to the landlord tenant board it's such a critical thing that if you do it wrong is it worth the risk? Is, is it yeah, if you, if you fix your own toilet because you want to save the five to thousand bucks, depending on the time of night and toilet it is, that's one thing. If a leak happens because you did that, you can ask for forgiveness and say sorry to the tenants to clean up the mess. Hmm. Okay, you'll just spend more time. You're not going to lose money out of pocket. But if you place a bad tenant in there and it's three thousand dollars a month, it's very easy for you to you know lose that house. Yeah, and to be to cheap out on those crucial items, it's just it makes it makes zero sense. If you are so hard up for money that you have to do that, you should sell the rental property. Okay. If you're just doing this out of principle, well, you're going to learn some hard lessons, I think, because this is not a game for principle. Okay. This is a game that your tenant is your client, is your customer, and you need to provide them with a decent type of service. And that's the only way that you go out this with no problem. Yeah. Placing that tenant, it, it happens so much and it usually happens quick that you, you met him. He sounds like a good guy. Maybe he likes the same team as you. He works down the street. You put him in there, that all of a sudden he doesn't pay rent. And that's because he just got laid off. Yeah. But he probably got laid off, you know, eight times every two years. Yeah. Right. And you just didn't do the checks. You didn't go through the bank statements. Yeah. No, it, it, the amount of people that end up finding out all these gruesome details about their tenant after they've moved into their property and they started yeah. Googling them, yeah. it's amazing how many people don't just simply Google their tenant, right? To see yeah. uh, what, what the situation is. And we have some cool platforms being in 2024 now where we have places like Open Room where you go on there and you can see a list of tenants' names in your city that old landlord rent. Yeah. Right? As much as people would say that that's a bad thing, I think it's a great thing. People think it's invasive. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. We could touch on how every city likes to license stuff now. It's a license frenzy out there. We started, we licensed Airbnbs. And now we're licensing, you know, in Hamilton, student rentals. We're, and soon it'll be, we want to put a tax on vacant units. You know what I want to license for? Tenants. I want tenants to have their own driver's license. I want them to go to Service Ontario and get a tenant driver's license that says you pay rent every year on time and you get your little sticker. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah. And it would make the system so easy. We don't need to do any of this stuff. Okay. All we need to have in place is a tenant tenant license program, just like we're doing to landlords, right? If 
you we think that's fair, then you know it should be fair on both ends. We can't just keep the landlords accountable and not the tenants. I feel like that is like the common sense thing where, you know, if you're going to hold landlords accountable, you should be holding tenants accountable too. There's no reason why there should be a different degree of accountability in practice for both parties, right? That's what creates this animosity of, oh, landlords versus tenants and tenants versus landlords. It should, it's just people trying to get by, but you shouldn't be allowing one party to exploit. And that's a, a topic for another time. But yes, you're absolutely right. In terms of where saving money that is effective though for landlords, Uh, When it comes to the bills, I see a lot of people look at optimizing, let's say, water bills, right? Getting the water efficient toilets, getting the the faucets that don't use a lot of water in the shower and all kinds of things. And it's like, and you see people every now and then get these giant water bills, right? That will reflect on some kind of a leak in the property, right? It spikes from like a couple hundred bucks to like $800 one month. Yeah. And then what is it usually? Like a leaky toilet. And then the company's so late to call you. Yeah. They, they call you when, they, when they've already charged you for it. Yeah. Right? I'll tell you a true story about the, how the water company operates. I got a new window replaced in my basement. Yeah. And the window company covered it up where they would read the water meter. It, it's just like a black thing that they just touch and they get a reading. Well, the window was replaced last year. I didn't notice it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we get a phone call from Alexa saying, hey, we owe you know $1,500 in water. Yeah. What do you mean? How? We haven't got a reading in a year, and we just got the reading now, and this is how much you owe. That is not fair. No, so what'd you do? You should tell me the first month, and I would have had this fixed. You put up a fight so much, right, and they, they don't care. They'll go on your tax bill, and, you know, that's how that's how these big corporations operate. That's really, see, this is where, like, you know, you can save, save, save. We, I talk about this sometimes with my friends, that, like, sometimes, uh, you know, just daily saving, saving on groceries, saving on... Uh, on uh whatever your yeah. your gas people will go to the cheaper gas station yeah. right people will do all these micro savings and then they get a parking ticket or you, you get uh, a red light camera ticket it just totally obliterated all your savings one thing yeah. took away all your savings and this yeah. is where like you know you as a landlord you can save honestly there's a lot of things and if you micro optimize your property you save here 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 and everywhere it does add up but understand that in real estate, like some of the numbers that we're dealing with are bigger and as such the expense can like one expense can decimate your efforts and this is why i think yes you know yeah, what? consequences yeah there's no consequences from shopping from no frills to fortinos no right i'll probably save a little bit more but driving no there imagine you drove for the sale and then you got a you got a red light ticket that's never happened to me <laughs> it's never happened to me maybe i should just do that in my saturday mornings would be so much more easy i would just go to the closest grocery store the saving potential that you have as an individual doesn't matter what you're trying to save in is all can only go so far before even the attempt of saving is going to cost you. It's kind of like, yeah, I save all this money on appliances. Well, imagine yeah. the one time you brought a dud. For people here listening to this, I would say that you're more type of the person instead of saving that money and even using the mental energy to think about saving, yeah. you'd just rather go make the money. Well, yeah. Let's go put the money. Let's go put the brain power to make the money. But a deal is still very exciting. Like in the same way that you get excited about finding a real estate deal, like this property, like we practically stole it or something. Yeah. Right? We got a good deal on this property. It feels also good to get a good deal on materials. Like, you know, I brag to you all the time. It's like, yo, these tiles, you yeah, know, we got yeah, these two, yeah. two like yeah. one Fuck foot 50. by two foot tiles or two foot by four foot tiles at $2 a yeah. square foot, right? I'm over the moon about this. I'm yeah. like, we, ju- we we robbed the place. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. This is how good I feel about it. But that's different from just compulsively saving. Compulsively saving without clear direction as to what your net gain is yeah. and opportunity cost. And I think that's what people need to assess. People sometimes need to assess the opportunity cost behind saving. Yeah. What is the effort? Like, it's, it's simple if you have two choices and you can choose to cut your cost here versus spend here. If you don't see a measurable impactful difference, go with the cheaper option. Yeah. If you're going to go for something that is going to save you but might cause you headache, like the warranties we talked about, it might buy you peace of mind now, but when you have to use them oh, and it take a week to show it's up, then you realize the headache. Even if it's a good deal. Even if the warranty's like a good deal, it's still a headache. There's no way that any landlord should be buying any warranties. Yeah, none that we've seen that has been effective. If no. anybody does see one that is effective, let us know, because honestly... They'll, they'll be out of business. Yeah. No, they would be out of business. If there was a good <laughs> warranty that we would all like, they would be out of business. Why? That, that's because the price would be cheap enough and the problems would happen so... So often that the company would just be out of business. Yeah. If there's a good warranty, it's impossible. You know, sometimes there are certain warranty services that I wonder how they afford to do them. Like, uh, by the way, the, the classic car, yeah. like I have that one classic car, Haggerty's Insurance. Yeah. This is often yes. real estate yes. a little bit, but Haggerty's yeah. Insurance, they offer you, the RV, I think, yeah. like four 
towing services a year yeah. included. And the insurance is only 400 bucks. Yeah. How can they afford to tow your car? Like, this is the thing. They must, they must have, like, the data indicating that, like, of all the, of all the cars that they've insured, 80% of them, I bet, don't get towed even once a year. So they probably yeah. may have, like... You don't have tugs. CAA? Uh, no. Okay, so we have CAA. Why do you have CAA? I don't know. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Okay, I have this great Wait, wife. It? I have a great wife. She likes it for peace of mind. Okay, I got it, yeah. I've never used it. No. Okay? Crazy. Routine work, though, when the, when the membership uh, expires. Yeah. We renew it. Yeah. So it's peace of mind. So don't save on your home insurance. <laughs> right. Well, insurance, we could talk a whole podcast on insurance. No, yeah. I think we, we, we did, right? Where we, we, we covered, like, you know, whether or not you use water and all kinds of other things. But, like, there are certain areas that landlords can save money. Warranties, I don't think people use them enough. No. It is kind of like insurance, really. Yeah. Um, but you're just getting ad hocs. You should actually maybe check with your insurance company whether or not you can just lower the yeah. deductible to like zero and pay more for the insurance. See whether that that makes more sense and you can like use it for small problems. Not the best way to spend your money in order to save money. That's another area where I think you end up spending more because how many people have we come across where they have the warranties? They end up having a problem. They don't end up using the warranty because it's too it's too much of a hassle to use it. They just end up paying to solve the problem. Yeah. I don't know. Anything else that we think that landlords can do to save money? I think you should cut your own grass. Like if you have a couple properties... Cut your own grass in the summer. That's fine. Blow your leaves. I think being being present is always good. Goes a long way. But you should never sacrifice your peace of mind. Like doing snow, there's too much liability when it comes to something like that. But there's not much that I would want to. Those are all in. low risk tasks. Yeah, right. smoke alarm batteries and make sure you can document it. You know, change the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Maintain your fil- uh, your furnace, change yeah. the filters, that type of stuff. Yeah, there's there's certain things that honestly anybody can do. But then there come there's there's things that go into the skilled area. And I think you shouldn't underestimate it. You should value professionals and value the quality of the work that they can do for your property in order to sustain a quality property.